Conference game number one between Gromnak Waiting Room and Method A kicks off here in the free. All right, so and both of these teams are off. Uh, both of them shrouding all the way up into Sky Captain Crag's room. Is there anything that you expect to see at the very beginning of this, Dina? Uh, I, mean, I was just going to say I'd expect to see a shroud into the big pull up into Krog, which, uh, into Sky Captain, like to get the mobs killed that activate him. Um, and it looks like that's what both teams are doing at the moment, and uh, using yeah, using cooldowns, doing a metric ton of damage. Yeah, and have... the pack getting melted pretty quick here. Way of the crane is so amazing to look at. Yeah, that one yeah. button rotation. One button rotation. Fully topping the entire group. It's beautiful. Miss Weaver Monk is so silly. You basically just keep pulling trash and you keep pulling more and more until the pull eventually becomes easier. <laughs> it's like, okay. yeah. I mean, and you end up doing more damage. Like you see uh, JB doing 100k on, on that pull as well. Like that's, you know, that's nothing to nothing to scoff at as we see them both pulling at Sky Captain Krag. Almost more than a boomkin. <laughs> that was not happening. <laughs> Depends how many starfalls you use, I guess. No, it doesn't. No, it, doesn't it really well. doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. Rip their hands. Uh, rip the boomkin dream. What is this F weak aura that JB has on his frame? What is that from? I've been trying to work that out for, for the last few days, actually. I have no idea. I think it's actually whenever he's uh, in range of like certain mechanics or something along those lines. Like the way that he was running around... Uh, like the boss, I think it might have just been like if he's not able to hit the boss, or if there's uh, yeah, I think if, if he's not able to hit the is... boss because he's definitely out of melee range. At first, I thought it was mechanics because he was running around like saw blades and stuff. But now that I look at it here, he's just jumping out of melee. Yeah, okay, it is melee range, You're right? Okay, that's so weird. That's All so right, weird. And yeah. Gromnak waiting room and Method and A both ended up uh, killing Sky Captain Crag within a few seconds of one another. It looked like a shine from Gromnak waiting room actually left a little bit early and was grappling over to probably start RP either on, I think it's probably on the pig RP just to make sure that they do have that set up and ready to go whenever they are making their way. And then a shine, of course, with that stealth is uh, just going to be able to make his way back as quickly as possible. They're going to all be looking to drink this brew right here and then probably do a sizable pull into Council of Captains right here. Yeah, I mean, it's been fairly standard. Well, I mean, standard. We've seen one freehold up until this point, but it's it's kind of been what every, or what both Inertia, Method, EU are doing, and I would assume it's the same as both of these teams are going to do as well. Do a big pull here into the two bosses and just wear the crane to stabilize to while the DK kills everyone. Spike actually having to pop turtle a little bit early, but I think the pool is over a little bit, and then it should be more than stable to... Yeah, yeah, because this that pool can actually be kind of scary with Rawl and um, all of those Harpooners that ended up being in that pack. Like, if he got gripped into that barrel smash from Rawl, then Swag could be in danger, but with the early turtle, he's just going to get hit with the Harpoon and not be yoinked in the melee. So that's actually a really good play by him, just to be able to bait all those Harpoons. Looks like both yeah, Method really... and A and Gromnak Waiting Room are about at the same point on Council. Oh my gosh, this boss is actually just getting melted. Yeah, I mean, when you have a lot of funnel damage and a lot of mobs, you, you kill things very quickly. Uh, on top of that, it is a fortified key, right? So so the bosses aren't the most scary thing, right? They, they're they kind of just big trash mobs in, in, this, uh, in this environment, I, I think. Okay, that was a sick jump by Lady. He got, yeah, he got grabbed really by good. the harpoon, and then the insta uh, heroic leaped before it yoinked him all the way in. Uh, whereas on the side of Gromnak waiting room, a, sh a shine walked ahead to be able to solo out the pig, and now his team is meeting back up with him. Whereas for Method and A, they took a different way around, and then all clicked the pig, and now we're doing the trash on top of it. Both of these teams are actually neck and neck right now, though. Yeah, it's a slight difference in the root variation, but ultimately I think it kind of achieves the same thing, right? They've, they've both got the pig RP going, they've both spawned in Ludwig, and they're both pulling mobs into him as uh, JB's getting a little bit chunked out. Yeah, he was spinning, and then suddenly the, the turtle spawns, and uh, Ludwig uh, decided that JB was the target, actually having a proper aim instead of hitting the tank, hitting the healer. 
Ah, uh, you don't want to code your your mobs to hit healers. No, less of that. If you were a raid boss, you know, if Teller was a raid boss, he'd be the smart man. He'd, he'd hunt them down. Go after them. <laughs> Here, okay, so here's here's what you got to know. If you target the healer with every single mechanic, eventually they're going to mess up. <laughs> See? That is true. Fortunately, we oh don't have God, a genocide is... of healers coming out. But... Hold on, that's a huge pull by Gromnak waiting room. So they pulled... Uh, the patrol plus the back right pack plus that other corner pack. And they're looking to probably pull some of it into Trothak, but they're trying to get as much of this down as they possibly can. <laughs> Quaking and uh, Quaking and Volcanic are not exactly known as the most oppressive of fixes, especially for pulling a bunch of trash into bosses here. So they're actually stacking everything up on top of Trothak. And then Wolf Disco is probably going to start dropping his D&D, &D, get all of his Festermite stacks, and being able to look at, look at Trothak's health. It's actually just... It's melting. He's melting. It's melting. Hell. Very good timing, Ben, as well. They had to pop the Ring of Peace uh, a little bit early to make sure that the tank didn't take any unnecessary damage, and then it lined up perfectly, and he just melted. So something that's also going to be interesting to note is the different pathing that Gromnak Waiting Room and Method NA actually took to get into this area. Method, uh, Gromnak Waiting Room actually went up the right-hand side, meaning that I think they're going to have a more direct line to be able to get out of this area, whereas Method NA came up the left-hand side, and I didn't see if they pulled all of the trash that led into this point. So I, I wonder if they may have to like shadow melt off some trash, maybe waste a couple of seconds, whereas Gromnak Waiting Room may be able to just like blitz out all the way. I didn't exactly see if they got all of the trash from that side, though. It's going to be interesting to see how that all works out. I, I'm not sure as well, like it's, it's kind of hard to see, but um, I mean, they've both done their homework, right? They've both uh, prepped, mm -hmm. obviously, quite a lot for this dungeon. So I guess they're, they're playing the routes that they think are the most efficient. And ultimately, uh, one of them is going to little bit ahead. Okay, right. so, so Method in A ended up killing Trothak a little bit further ahead, but they had a Crusher in with them. But they're just going, they're just running by. They're all going to shadow melt off all of the aggro from that crusher. They were just using the crusher to be able to give them a little bit more single target via keep your wits about you and fester might, um, and then also rapid reload from the beast mastery hunter. So that that's definitely interesting. Both teams sitting at a nice uh, sixty seven percent trash count. You're going to see like all of these teams using cannonball barrages from Harlan to be able to kill trash, but people are dying on the side of method in a. Yeah, people are dying, and Gromnik is actually a little bit ahead on Trash. Oh, yeah. Actually about 10% almost ahead. So they've done a little bit of a bigger pool uh, with okay. uh, Gromnik. But... Really unfortunate quaking timing, interrupting the uh, the mass res cast, causing JB to have to recast it. And this is putting them behind as we see Gromnik waiting room, pulling the boss, pulling all four lieutenants with it. They've lusted, and they're going big. They're trying to, trying to do it in a... Yeah, Gromnak waiting room is solidly in the driver's seat. It's also interesting to see Zamok. So everybody is standing inside of that Dark Fury as Zamok does have Way of the Crane available. So they're not really worried about taking that incidental damage from that Dark Fury. Basically, as long as you're not getting one shot, you're going to be healed all the way up to full with that Way of the Crane, the next global that Zamok is able to press spinning crane kick. So that was actually a very smart idea of them. Because the Dark Fury from Urgroth, Breaker of Heroes, is probably one of the most dangerous parts of pulling him into final bosses just forcing your melee to get out of melee range and method in a a couple more issues with some deaths coming down looks like they may have another full team wipe again yeah jp it looks down i don't know if they have another combat dress if, if they have a combat dress already it looks like a full team wipe and all gromlack needs to do right now is just you know be careful don't wipe and they'll take the they'll take the game then yeah, that we do see, I believe, yep, the full team might coming out from Method NA. They're going to have to reset. They're going to have to get their wits about them back and uh, recompose themselves, uh, assuming that Gromnak Waiting Room do mess up this pull. But uh, all the four lieutenants are dead. Like, the, the next question is how much trash are they bringing into this pull? But they've only got 9% to do. So it's looking very clean for them. Why is chat spamming in a lull? Kana, can you explain this to me? Why they're spamming in a lol? Um, it's very likely that this is an NA uh, region group that managed to wipe, and EU actually managed to purge the fear. It happened a lot there as well during the a previous uh, event, but then it was turned around. So, oh, okay, yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Harlan Sweet, uh, once he does drop below thirty percent health, he's going to be taking hundred percent increased damage, and with that, he's just going to be 
killed fairly quickly. Brown Mac waiting room with 100% trash count. Harlan Sweep below 30%. This boss is dead in just a couple yeah, more seconds in Brown Mac waiting room. Annihilate. Yeah, definitely take game one. The second, yeah, there it the, goes. the second pool into like Harling was also like super super clean. Between Gromnak waiting room and Method NA to see who will be moving on into the finals. So Already Dina. This. Oh, go what? go for it, Tuttles. I was about to ask, what do you think we're about to see right here? Uh, I mean, they're probably going to pull the mobs that are in front of them because they need to kill the mobs that are in front of them before the boss spawns. That's probably what we're going to. Actually... Um, but... Uh, carry on. I do actually think it's actually really interesting that they actually took the workshop uh, workshop because I um, right before this match I was like watching uh, Method EU a little bit and I was listening into the comms and they actually opted to swap out one of the Mega Kong dungeons for an atoll, which is just because like they aren't that practice. So maybe uh, Grumrock actually just has like a really well think they have a really well planned out tactic for this and they think Method A might be a little bit shaky on the specific uh, on the specific map. Just so hopefully. something that was interesting to me right there is that Gromnak waiting room didn't even pull the mobs into the hammer. Um, so they, they wanted their sanguine management to be just a little bit different. So they ended up using those rocket barrages that the mobs end up doing uh, to be able to kill all of the mobs off as opposed to taking them into the hammer and letting the hammer knock them down. They're, they're also doing something that's incredibly smart here. If you actually taunt No Mercy, you can um, keep him underneath that hammer, and every single hit of that hammer does do damage to No Mercy. So they were doing a really smart thing by tanking him underneath it the whole entire time. They get, they're get they trying to get all the plating off the Platinum Pummeler, and then they start DPSing him down as quickly as possible too, while No Mercy is just sitting there at a significantly low amount of health and is just going to die over to Passive Cleave once it does make his way towards the rest of the group with that um, Mega Thrust right there. Yeah, yeah this is actually a really... Yeah, this is a really well choreographed fight from both uh, teams, really, like having them both come down at pretty much the same time uh, due to, you know, good position and good hammer usage. Okay, so Gromnak's strategy for how they did the first boss was like significantly superior because of how they were using that cannon. And then in addition to that, they left no mercy whenever the vent jets started casting and just started hitting Platinum Pummeler to be able to get even cleave on the last, I don't know, 20% of the 20% of the boss. Whereas Method NA fully committed into no mercy and then started killing Platinum Pummeler. And that's why uh, Method NA is currently a few seconds behind. Gromnak waiting room, popping shroud, running all the way into Kujo's room. It's going to be interesting to see if they are going to look to pull all of this trash into Kujo or if they're going to take the more safe strategy, which what I normally expect, and uh, look to line of sight all of these oozes that are dying. Ooh. They'll, pro they'll probably look to ring them and then move around the corner and then pull the rest into Kujo. Oh, as he said. It's a must. Got drilled. Huh. Yeah. This is uh, not looking great for our European heroes. And Method yeah. and A uh, pulling ahead. <laughs> um, doing a very similar pull to what we just saw from Gromnak Waiting Room. If it goes a little bit better for them, then they will be able to make up some of the time that they did lose on No Mercy and Platinum Pummeler. Yeah, those yeah, drills are brutal. Spicy. Yeah. The drill literally looked at Method and A for like 0.1 second and took off like 20% of the HP, HP of the entire party in one. And that drill was chasing Smock on the on the previous pull from uh, Grumrock, so... I don't know how he got... I don't know how he got threat from it. He must have gotten healing threat, because he looked like he had aggro, right? I don't think Divine was just, like, running the drill straight at him. Like, the no, drill, no, of he, course, does point yeah. near the tank, but I think Smock had threat. Yeah, Smock definitely had threat. I don't know if it was maybe, like, some possible mist on, some some keybind, or if the fine shields... Uh, the Twilight Devastation just, again, didn't proc and it didn't get aggro. Could have been... He could have taunted it. Um, so there is a speed component to the monk taunt provoke yeah. where it will make uh, mobs run a little bit quicker. That could have been a thing where Zamok taunted it just to make sure that it ran faster and then uh, was waiting for Divine to taunt back. I, it's hard to even say what exactly happened. Like at this point, we're just purely speculating. Um, chat spamming EU Keck W Kana. Can you explain that one to me? Uh, yeah, so this is something that I'm very familiar with. With this, uh, this is whenever an EU group would make a mistake, and the chat really likes to take the piss out of it. Um, I see. I have a lot of experience with this, uh, with that certain one. Sometimes the numbers, like I said, like they swapped around, go from EU to NA. But uh... all right, so method NA here is going to be down in Kujo. They're going to make their way through the gauntlet. Uh, hopefully nobody falls in the fire or dies because that would be a good meme. Gromnak waiting room 
a few of their members are dropping pretty low. Cujo is looking at 30% help. Uh, ignore, that. ignore that. Oh, ignore that. Oh, Jake. Ignore that. Well, he didn't <laughs> die to the fire. <laughs> um, what the hell, man? <laughs> I mean, well, he survives. Movement's difficult, all right? <laughs> Stop saying cast well, curse. That is not my fault, bro. It looks like Gromnak are finishing up uh, Kudo here. After a little bit of a spicy uh, set of explosive leaps there, they got uh, chunked down pretty low during the fight and uh, are now on the conveyor belt up to this first Alama bot and little gauntlety section, uh, which uh, Method NA haven't waited for JB. They, they just pulled it. Who needs the healer anyway? Certainly not demon hunters. It's a unfortunate truth. So it's interesting that this is going to be a two lust dungeon. I suspect that their second blood lust is probably going to come at the very beginning of King Mechagon to be able to kill down those awakened mobs. On live keys, we actually see a lot of second blood lusts come out on this trash pack because it is incredibly deadly. But with the just the swiftness at which these teams are being able to kill these mobs, they're only going to get two. Yeah, they're, they're, as uh, was being said earlier, right, if they're playing to get a third lust in, then they're probably not playing to, you know, be super optimal, because that then makes your lowest timer a 20-minute dungeon, which isn't exactly ideal in a mm -hmm. uh, race situation. Uh, I absolutely agree. So we do see Gromlak... Oh, sorry, go. No, go for it, King. We do see Gromlak right now, or uh, at least back in the same room. I think they're like one... Uh, wave behind could maybe be two, but they are at least you know they've they did kind of restore. We did see in Friot like you know for, uh, Method and A they made like one small mistake and it cost them a lot of time. So and I do think they're gonna go. In... Are they going for the awakened here? They they should go for the yes. Awakened. They, they should play the this one. Um, and the reason for that is because like the alternative is actually doing that that gauntlet with the robots normally. And realistically, you're not going to lose much time doing this Awakened mob um, relative to just doing that robot gauntlet normally. So you, you're just going to see them do it. And then, like, real, realistically, if they did, in fact, have that fourth Awakened mob into King Mechagon, it's not, going to, it's not going to necessarily slow them down as much, but it is damage that they otherwise could have been putting into the boss. So it, it, it can be a little bit rough. Oh, they snapped him. Okay, so uh, some of the Awakened mobs, there are snap spots. I know notably there's some in Toldegor that are fairly useful. I didn't know that there was one in Workshop that you can just snap mouth ear like that. Huh. That is actually super smart, especially since it's just purely a caster, so otherwise you have to constantly run back to it, make sure you interrupt, and or either that's out of range. But that's mm -hmm. a really fast way of getting there. I I wonder where they stood to snap that mob, because I would like to use that later. I'm going to have to look I at that back. I believe it was on, on top of one of the little pieces of scenery, like what some of the boxes on the far right, uh, oh, opposite where the last smoke screen yeah. is. Right. Oof. Oh, that is unfortunate. Uh, so Lip does end up going down. They're, they're looking to battle res him right now with the engineering battle res. Of course, on the tournament realm this season, uh, there is engineering battle res available just to allow a little bit better class diversity for just to allow you to see mystery monks and stuff like that. Because previously, in previous seasons, there would not be that. Um, and that would be just a major loss to have Lyft go down. Looks like Gromnak Waiting Room has actually caught up, even though they did have that major mishap with that uh, full team wipe it near the Cujo area, whereas Method and A are still slightly ahead. They're definitely in the lead, though. Well, they've got the 25-second um, time penalty for wiping, you know, for the five deaths to get through as well. So they've got to make up a lot of time here. But as you said, they are gaining and and you can really see why they chose to bring this as the second map uh, in the series. Yeah, overall, like their their workshop has been like incredibly good. Just like looking at the first bus where they gained a lot of seconds. It's just that one small mistake, the one weird uh, drill chasing smoke that just caused them to be behind. But like if that didn't happen, if that pool went right, they would have been really, really fast in this. Yeah, it's very impressive, especially as, as as you said before, it's it's a relatively new dungeon. This is the first kind of time that either of the Mechagons have been seen in a tournament setting, and for them to have already seemingly made huge sort of 
leaps in their optimization of the run is is really good to see as uh, we see the mechanist going down for gromnak and they are playing the catch-up game on these spider tanks the real question is why are there three of these on teaming <laughs> <laughs> because they don't because uh they heard you like dodging silences Tetos is only upset that there's three because he got hit by a silence. Isn't this true? Yeah. <laughs> no. Not well, yet. That's what I heard as well. There's, there's still <laughs> chance. There's still an opportunity. Uh, Method and A did end up killing those two spider tanks, and they uh, procced those robots that are going to be taking them up towards King Mechagon. Gromnak waiting room hot on their heels as well. Of course, you got to note that Gromnak waiting room does have four deaths over uh, Method and A, so that they have. Like, if they were going to win, they were going to have to kill King Mechagon 20 seconds faster than Method in A. Yeah, it's going to be a tall ask, considering they are, like, a few seconds behind at the moment, and there's not really that much left of the dungeon, right? It's it's a few, like, one, I think this last trash pack, maybe? Maybe one more after that? And and then just a boss. And, and the boss has a set amount of RP that you've got to get through. Mm -hmm. You know, you're stunned for 10 seconds through it. You can't really... Like it, it's hard to optimize it and gain time on these last uh, on on that last boss. Yeah, uh, this this next trash pack is by far the most dangerous, um, just the most dangerous in the dungeon. And it's, I would highly advise normally not pulling this trash pack just because uh, there is like an overclock ability that will go on to all the mobs, and you need to purge it off as quickly as possible. Then there's like the short outs ended up going off. Okay, so they're actually going to be skipping this. They actually don't even need it, so whatever. It doesn't even matter. They're going to group Shadow Meld, and then they're going to be looking to pull King Mechagon here shortly. Yeah, as he said, it's a very scary pack, yeah. and probably right to play around not pulling it. I, I would absolutely agree. So we see both teams getting set up for this final boss. Both teams with three lieutenants during this boss, and... It looks like they are lusting the lieutenants as well, wanting to burn them down as quickly as possible because obviously they're they're kind of the scariest part of this uh, this first part of the boss. The, the boss doesn't really do that much. The zap only hits one person as long as you don't all line up. So it's just a case of not standing in the um, the uh, little bouncers and um, and killing the lieutenants down really. Can't, can't even know too well about standing in the bouncers, getting knocked off the edge occasionally, and having to be like, uh, please rest. I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? Mm -hmm. So those those blue balls that uh, move towards you, they knock you back, and if you get hit by them, you can get knocked off the ledge. Oh, it's pretty it's pretty scary whenever Samrek is up because if you get feared, like of course you can control your fear pathing somewhat. You get feared relative to where Samrek is facing, but if for some reason you got feared and then hit by with the ball and lo lobbed off the ledge, it would uh, it would at least make for a good twitch clip. That would make for a really good twitch clip. I mean, that's what they really should be playing for, right? They should be playing for the Twitch. <laughs> for the clout. Yeah, true, it's for the clout, true. bro. I'm looking to topple Nal's, uh, <laughs> Nal's clip. I'm actually curious, like, the further that this dungeon gets, like, uh, like the more people play it, how greedy people want to actually, like, try and min-max the damage on this uh, on the first phase of this. Because if when the boss, uh, when the first phase dies, you get stunned for like seven seconds, and if there's like a commander alive or an awakened mob, I mean, that's not gonna be a fun time. So yeah. I'm actually gonna be really curious if there's gonna be some time in MDI where you know they actually kill uh, the boss a bit too fast and end up wiping just because they're stunned for eight seconds and there's still some mobs alive. I mean, you've really just push. gotta prioritize the boss, right? Uh, sorry, not the boss, the lieutenants. Interesting. Yeah, Gromak apparently is short on count. I think they may have missed one of the Uzlings or one of the dogs. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that is what you hate to see. That, yeah, I mean, they're at 159 out of 160. I mean, theoretically, they can just pull the the pack behind them, kill whichever mob has the least health in there, and then be done. But yeah, that that's not looking good for them, especially as they are trying to catch up and they have the extra 20 odd seconds that they've got to make up. I, I feel like this is um, not going to end too well for them, oh, and yeah. the this legacy is, uh... of coins being. Suboptimal is going to continue. Absolutely, Method in A. Uh, definitely going to be taking this, even with Yoda down. This is a this is a good run for Method in A. Definitely something they needed. <laughs> Making it a three to one now, I think, for people who uh, are on the receiving end of the coin. I'm out of it. So I don't know if they would have practiced it. Uh, Grandback Waiting Room is actually starting on the Alliance side. They're actually running as an Alliance team, whereas Method in A is 
running as a horde team. I wonder if Bromdak even has horde characters prepared. Well, That's NA versus EU, Horde versus Alliance. Let's take it in our deciding game in the semifinals between Gromnak Waiting Room and Method. Uh, uh, Horde for Siege of Boralus is notably significantly superior for multiple reasons. For one, you get just a lot more count from... Uh, like So Alliance has Marauders and, and Footmen, and then... Uh, Horde has like these gutters in these footmen. The gutters give, uh, I think there's like significantly more gutters in footmen than the marauders that do reside inside of the Alliance Side Siege. But it looks like somebody who went, has went down on the side of Method and A during that skip and are not going to be able to be rezzed yet. Uh, That's... Master Ed should be able to reach from there. It's got a very large range. As soon as they get out of combat, they, they should be fine. Obviously, a yeah, little bit of a time loss. Huh. Okay, well, anyways, as, a, as and another thing that is actually uh, slower about Alliance Side Siege that is quicker for Horde Side Siege is after Hadal, the third boss of this instance, the Alliance has to wait like 20 seconds for RP, whereas the Horde does not. And the first boss of Siege of Boralus also has a bunch more adds spawning for the Alliance side than the Horde side. It's actually just a terrible dungeon for Alliance, and I'm so sorry for any Alliance players who have to play this dungeon. It's really interesting that we're actually seeing like the two differences here. I thought there was already gonna be like a lot of difference in just the fact that it's Rested Druid versus Miss Weaver, which I I mean I talked about it earlier. I think Smok is in general a more aggressive player than JB, so I was curious to see if they how much he can actually utilize the uh way of the crane in the bigger pools. But now I also see them as alliance. This is like uh quite uh quite the difference. Mm -hmm. I do, do I you think, think I I wonder if the the full Night Elf team is due, or like the full Alliance team is due to just being able to Nelf Racial off all of the aggro from some of the bolstering mobs so that they can play a little bit more carelessly with some of their bolstering stacks and then just like completely reset the pack as a group five meld. Maybe, maybe. Also, like one thing that actually I I literally just noticed as well, I kind of almost forgot about it. Residue has really good AoE damage because now they can steal the Azerite Beam from the, from the Demon Hunter. Yeah, I was just about unlike, to touch, yeah, touch unlike on that actually as well. the the monk having to you know play. Uh, I think it's conflict right for the way of the, to get way of the crane as uh, as his ability. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can actually... the five percent damage buff from the mystery of a monk, I think, almost has to be better damage gained than what the resto druid is going to gain from the demon hunter buff. I mean, probably, yeah, probably true, but. but... I think like on like on the really small like short AOE, the beam is gonna be really big. It's just like the the buff is obviously gonna be very beneficial for like, I mean bosses most likely and longer lasting pools. But it is it could be well used. Yeah. Uh. So Gromnak waiting room here. I think they had a mob CC'd off to the side. Okay. So yeah, they have the Black Tar bomber CC'd off to the side. And if you were uh, if you were Horde, you probably don't know what this bomb does. But he throws these uh. Fire throws it throws these bombs. It basically throws these bombs at people, and it does like sixty percent of your health per bomb that actually ends up getting thrown at you. It's unavoidable. And then, in addition to that, there is an Iron Tide Raider that comes in this pack, and he throws a hook out. And if he and the hook is also unavoidable, but it is physical damage. You could get comboed down by the Black Tar Bomber and the Iron Tide Raider at the exact same time and instantly die. So they did a good job of seeing that. Whereas Method in A has already killed the first boss in Siege. So, hmm. <laughs> I think that Grubneck may have not spent a ton of time practicing this dungeon, or maybe I'm just wrong. I mean, it it kind of looks that way. Yeah, I, I think that they literally just planned to coin away from this dungeon, which, it, it's not really their fault. Like, they planned on just never playing this dungeon. And, and fair, they fair enough, too, though, right? They're playing the bracket that's put in it. front of them. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's definitely the smart decision for them to do that. But I guess uh, Method NA have been, I mean, obviously they've been practicing this dungeon. They've been, you know, expecting it to be part of their um, their bracket. And so as soon as they see the, the coin away from it, they're like, well, let's just put them straight back in Siege. Like, why not? Siege of Boralus requires an unholy amount of practice. Like, it, it, it is probably the dungeon that you need to spend the most time practicing uh, just to make sure that your strategies are solid. So... If you only see that you're playing it once, there's no real reason to spend that much time in playing this. Okay, so Method in A here has killed another Lieutenant Mobbit. And 
I think this is their second that they're actually going to end up killing. It's like we were saying, the Awakened mobs on Vikagoth are not really reasonable for you to be playing. So, so they're I, utilizing those to be able to move around. I wonder if JB was just jumping on that little wall over there to see if he could snap the if he could snap them towards them. Yeah. Still moving. Yeah, so, I think that's what he was doing. So Malthier can snap, but it can only snap if uh, the mob is not standing there casting. So either you have to double lock it out, or you just are all over 45 yards away, I believe, and then the mob will start running towards you and trying to begin casting. Right. Okay. Big form so, void damage coming in there as well. We do see a <laughs> you gotta bit, love it. We do see a massive mistake here by JB. Um, he didn't take away the F weak aura when he's uh, not a cat form. So now whenever he's in the uh, healing, there's F. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> it's because so he's been playing now. his pally. I, I think I think it's probably a result of him playing his paladin at this point. Yeah. Because I mean, the he's, Crusader he's, Strike is incredibly strong. He's playing, obviously, like Cat Infinity as well. And obviously, his monk, it makes sense as well. But it, it is just funny seeing him, like, standing far in range, putting his moon fires up and seeing the yeah. F. Oh, this is interesting. They're going back into the spirit realm to get past all of this trash. That's um really oh. cool because th this bridge pack is is pretty horrible to play. So yeah, um, yeah. So they skip all of that, and then the I think Yoda on the rogue ended up stealthing towards the blood of the corruptor, and then as soon as the blood of the corruptor spawns, uh, Yoda grapples away, vanishes off all of uh everything and then they tag blood of the corruptor to be able to get in combat with them then all of the tentacles teleport immediately right on top of the whole entire group and are significantly easier to be able to dps down once they are all in range like that that's a that's a good play right there that's yeah that's a really nice play. play and it also avoids a lot of the really awkward to deal with trash mobs on that sort of section and just below and in front of the bridge because they're they're not too annoying but they're very spread out there's a lot of them and some of them can keep you in combat for like for, forever right if, if you body pull them but they're aggroed to each other nicholas with the big sub to jb i'm sure he's very thankful shout outs don't reach out jb <laughs> don't reach out uh so the cannoneer and uh all of these mobs getting pulled in right now i wonder why they're pulling these before they end up pulling the marauders so most of the time the strategy that you'll see for uh this trash pack is you'll pull all the marauders one by one and then you will pull like the trash pack so they're they are doing it almost in reverse where they pull most of the trash pack and then they're going and killing the marauders so something interesting that's to interesting to notice obviously i think most people in here they know about the the spotter gameplay i think method na is keeping this specific spotter but I think Gromlock actually already has a spotter with like five, six stacks, or at least I saw one earlier. I don't know if they're gonna like try and shut him melt it off at some. They probably melted like... it off. Yeah. Or can they? Can you even keep a spotter for that long? No, no, so... it's still chasing them. I see him. I so, see him. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it too. Yeah, you actually can keep the spotter over the water. It's really difficult to move most of the time. If you're going to keep that spotter for prolonged periods of time, you're going to have to have a death knight uh, to just grip it. This is how Gromlock could be able to get back into the game if they are actually able to keep this spotter for prolonged periods of time then they're hard chilling if they're if they're not looking to keep it if they're actually just looking to meld it off as a group then the spotter, their strategy may just be slower does the spotter work on the, when you summon the awakened mobs on the last boss uh no, no. unfortunately no, it does not Okay, that spotter is actually so bolstered right now. Um, every single artillery barrage is just killing the whole entire group. Now they have a very fat commander they have, because the commander yeah. does not get hit by the spotter. That is a big horse. They have an even fatter <laughs> spotter, though, as well. It's got so much That's HP. Not yeah, as useful. I, I don't <laughs> think that the time gain from moving the spotter around and I, making that big one agree. Is, uh, is worth the. Uh, Keeping the spots. I think Methods and a way of actually do so far has actually have been really, really good. They didn't have to wait at all for the spotter, and I mean they have. I think they have the spotter with them still now, and I think they're just utilizing it uh, very, very well. Yeah, uh, Method and a has killed Dread Captain Lockwood and is now making their way towards uh, the demolishers in some of the Monkey Town area. Monkeys. I wonder what they're going to be pulling in this area. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what they end up pulling. Uh, Gromnak waiting room, of course, still bringing their spotter around. They're going to have a second spotter here uh, as well, dropping those artillery barrages on top of them. And 
their strategy is probably just to keep all three spotters for the whole entire dungeon, whereas the strategy for Method NA is something a little bit more controlled, uh, a more traditional style without the five Shadow Meld comp, where they're just taking the dungeon significantly slower and hoping that they don't get meleeed to death by the spotter. I mean, that is the idea, right? Not getting killed in these dungeons. I feel like that's probably something that these teams are aiming for. Yeah. I, I, uh, I just are... generally think Alliance Paralysis is, w is way worse, though. Oh, oh worse absolutely, regardless. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think the extra sort of racials you get and the little bonuses is, is worth having to deal with those extra mobs because those mobs are hideous. Uh, I don't know why they're they're comparable to the ones that the Horde get, but, you know, apparently they are. So you lose approximately 15 count. The first boss is harder. The The trash in the first boss room is harder. And then you auto lose 20 seconds after Hadal because RP is different. Uh, for for the Horde side, you actually just, um, like, the door just gets blasted open instantly. Whereas the Alliance side, the door just stays closed for 20 seconds. And then it gets blasted open. And you're just like, this is the most... Uh, ridiculous RP ever. Yeah, it is kind of curious to like to actually be able to find out like why they actually did go with Alliance. Well, we do see Shakib actually going. I think did he get hit by Sanguini or maybe the spots? Between... But oh. with the Rust of Druid play, uh, Shakib is actually able to get Battle Rest. But he he does yeah. release. So you actually don't release too far in this dungeon. Uh, too far away. You actually dread res in the dread Captain Lockwood area, and with them clearing out all the trash to be able to make it back, he doesn't have too many issues. So they're using a bunch of their CCs. Oh, um, mm, there, there goes all the mobs. Oh, all right. I, I did get a little heart attack when I saw JP charge into the spotter, though. Spotter.exe. that 404 mobs not found. Yeah, 404 mobs not found. Uh, unfortunately, the Demolisher does not get hit by the spotter, though. So they have to DPS yeah. that down normally from Gr Gromnak waiting room. So far, Method A has done a really nice job with, like, pulling the big individual mobs and then taking the spotter and then doing the big AOE on all of the smaller <laughs> Okay, so I think I, I do love how Ramnak's they've got both. I, I think <laughs> yeah. I understand Romnak's plan. They're going to get both spotters and they're going to make the spotters fight Hadal the Nautilus in an immortal battle and to see who <laughs> who's in fact bigger and badder. And I'm pretty sure these bolstered <laughs> spotters win. <laughs> I think if you have two <laughs> massive spotters and you put them inside the water, because you add so much weight, all the mud water will like go over <laughs> the edge, and then he, oh, the boss okay. will be exposed. Okay, so they're gonna, they're can... gonna part the tides and uh, yeah. <laughs> kill Vic Goth with the spotters again. Right, he oh, will be smart. he will be on dry land, and then you can just like very easily aim at at, uh, at him instantly. <laughs> so I see. You just you gets the boss down. It's like, it was an early tactic on Alpha as well, where you would ignore the third ship, like the, the third platform. Oh, yeah, and you and just, would just hit the boss. It's yeah, so exactly. Stupid. See, it's the same tactic. This may be a little bit outdated. All right, well, uh, Gromnak Waiting Room still dealing with some of their trash. Wolf Disco does end up going down there, unfortunately. Uh, Method in A is on Hadal, making sure that they continue to dodge some of those artillery barrages from their spotter. They're just going to root the spotter far away and hopefully not deal with it. The artillery does no, no longer hit the tentacles on Vic Goth, so that strategy uh, does not work anymore. So just making sure that you keep the spotter far away and hope it doesn't melee anybody is uh, I mean, what Method NA is looking to do. They're doing a really good job of um, getting these spotters back into Legion, uh, though in terms of health and stuff, they're up at sort of almost like hellier levels almost of, of health on, on one of those spotters. I think it's got 1.6 billion. That's uh, it's yeah, it looks like it. That's a big demolisher as well. Maybe they were scared yeah. that they didn't have enough weight for in the, like enough uh, volume for in the water, so they needed another one. Yeah, maybe. So I think Method NA is actually going to be playing two obelisks with this last boss. I think you're right, Dina. Uh, yeah. So so the the third one that they or one of them that they could have played was in and around this monkey town, which they did end up doing the whole of the like walking through the monkey town normally, obviously with the spotters dealing with it that way. Um, and the other one, I guess they no, I think earlier as well. I think Method has played one? three so far. They're playing one with the boss. Oh, okay. Are they actually only playing one? Okay. That's... Yeah, they they took the um, they took the first one very early after the rest on uh after the rest, and then they took the second one before the or the first RP segment where you get shot, and then they obviously took the third one where we were like, Oh, this is a really nice tactic right before the second. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, they still they still do have that spotter. Uh, it is going to be rooted right there, uh, just to be able to be dealt with easier. And they are DPSing down, full committing on that gripping tentacle. That's a I think that's a fairly common strategy, even on like live realm keys, where you just like bloodlust and then blow up that first gripping tentacle. Samrak the Beckoner is the only awakened mob that they do have to deal with here. The fears can be kind of dangerous, but it overall the fears don't seem like they would be that bad on this fight as long as you don't get clipped by any of those artillery barrages from the spotter. Uh JB yeah, while not... charging over to the next platform and they're going to be DPSing down Sam Rec while Yoda is going to be firing the cannon here in a second. Yeah, I, d I don't think the, the mob is too bad, but apart from the dispels, because you're obviously, as a healer, under a lot of dispel pressure already on this boss because the, it's putting out the two putrid waters. And unless they both happen to go on the same mob or you get, you know, feared underneath the spotters or whatever, it it, it could be a bit of a challenge to get through. But it looks like Samrak is going to go down and, uh, yeah, it's just a standard standard last boss. To JB flying a little bit, that's completely fine. Uh, don't, just don't, like... don't get launched in the water and picked up by the grasping tentacle. That's the only thing you have to worry about. So far, I don't know. I'm very impressed with the method and A's performance in this dungeon. They've done a very, they clearly had a really good plan going in and they ac executed it like basically perfect. Some very smart pulls with the awakened, uh, with the awakened mobs and in general, just like very, very clean uh, dungeon they've done so far. Good spotter uses as well, not having to wait around too much for him at all. And very clean pools as well, making sure that the spotter doesn't like bolster a massive uh, a sort of massive mob pulling most things apart. Overall, very, very impressed with uh, how clear how clear the siege was from them. Yeah, Grabnak waiting room has a full team wide. And has oh. a bunch of mobs running at them. They did so well in keeping those spotters up. I, uh, I like for the, such a long time. I, I like, like the, the 1.5 billion health spotter too. I think the strategy is just like slightly worse. I think it just comes down to practice. I think that there is some room for that strategy to be better. I think it's really hard to implement it in a good way, though. Yeah, uh, especially with how tricky they are to move around and keep it, you know, keep in exactly. range so they're actually being beneficial. Exactly. And Method in A, uh, off the back of a coin where they believed that, oh, wait, uh, Gromnak, what do you remember some practices? Let's go back into the Siege of Boralus, is going to be taking this series two to one.